please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Mellerson versus Williams Merritt. Thank you, Jerome. You're welcome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. Mellerson, you've entered the court with a wounded heart because uh, there are two different men who may have fathered your 11-month-old daughter, Chelsea. Now, Mr. Williams, you claim the plaintiff initially told you that you were not the father, yet now she claims you are. Yes, Your Honor. And, Mr. Merritt, you say it's your deepest hope today that the test proves you are Chelsea's biological father. Yes, ma'am. So, Ms. Mellison, you're in a relationship with Mr. Merritt. Mm hmm And you then begin to cheat on Mr. Merritt with Mr. Williams. Right. So, tell me a little bit about how you all met. Um, I had met Mr. Williams in 2012. Um, and from there, it just began with our relationship. Your Honor, it was never a relationship. It was a sexual relationship, sex, first of all. We had sex twice, and we Your never... Honor, he is lying, for because it. number one, Your Honor, Your Honor this man right Your Honor, here, for I don't know what he's trying to cover up for, if, for your For it to be a relationship, if, it, if we was in a relationship, ask her how many times have we ever left my house? It doesn't matter how many we times only, we left we the only, house. We only had sex twice, and both so, times she came to the house, and we never left the house. You do admit that you had sex with her. Yes, It we, was a yes. sexual relationship. Yes, ma'am. And that's pretty much all it takes to create a baby. Yes, ma'am. So that's why you're a potential father of Chelsea. First of all, I am 22 years old. Stacy is 38 years old. I don't know what he's trying to cover up. But, baby, trust and believe me, you were sleeping with me and her at the same time. I have no problem. So don't even go I there. Mean, there was no on. way. Your Honor, I, Your Honor. Can I please say Your this? Hold on. But I let you hold say on. what you Your had Honor. to say, so let There's me speak no on way. what I wanted to speak. There's no way I could have been sleeping with both of them because she just moved up here from Florida. Your Honor, this lady was here when I was pregnant. That is a lie. But I the was point pregnant. is, she admits sleeping with you. Right, but it was it was more than twice. It, it only takes times. once, though. Right. So we and, that's, and my point is that why he's here. And my point is that All right, so let's move forward a little bit to the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. You find out you're pregnant. Who do you tell? The first person I told was Mr. Williams. When I called him on the phone, I told him that it was a possibility of my ex being my child's father. I told her, okay, if it's a possibility, okay, we need to get a test and everything. She said, okay, would I let you know when I have my doctor's appointments? After she mentioned that to me, she didn't even have the same number. I never knew where she lived at. I continued so to how was I, my number. And she never called me either. When she called Did me, you change your number after you told I him you were pregnant? I constantly changed my... I just changed my number again. I changed my number at least every six months. Your Honor, the next time I, I heard my from her... every six months. So the point is, is what he's saying is true. You may have changed your number. I may have changed my number, but he don't remember me going to his house. I had gave him papers showing him that I was pregnant. When I went to his house, he had this stupid look on his face like, wait a minute, is she really Your pregnant? <laughs> Even then, you know, I'm like, you know, if you slept with me, just take it as there is a possibility Your of Honor. you being my even child's after, father. Even okay, after, and so, even Mr. After, Williams, what do you have to add? Even after, even after she contacted me to let me know that she was pregnant, and I told you that, she told me that when she go to the doctor, she'll let me know. And if I want to come to the doctor's appointment, that's fine. But like I said, she never... And you she, denied she that. She changed her number. She changed her number and, and she never contacted that. me. The next time, the next time I heard from Did her... Did you try to contact her? Nope. I tried, to, I tried to call her phone. She lying. had a different number. She don't have You're the same lying. number. You're lying. You're lying. The you next time I heard... To contact the next me. time I heard from her, that's when she sent me the text message. And Go it said, and lie. It turned around and it said, I'm glad Go you're not the... She said, it said, I'm glad you're not the father. And you I would sure did. You would have been a deadbeat anyway. Hold on. You tell the man you could be pregnant, mm -hmm. then you say there's a great possibility that I could have changed my number. Right. They, they, and he says been. he tried to reach out to you, but you say he did not. When you had the baby, you sent him a text again with a picture, but you said, I'm glad you're not the father? What happened? No, he's not telling it. He's not telling it all the way true. My child favors Mr. Merritt. She do. So, I, at that moment, I had thought that Chelsea was his child. You thought that 
It was Chelsea um, was Mr. Mary's Mr. child. Mr. Mary's child, right? And that's and when see, I had text him. Oh, see, that's the thing. I, I never knew. I never knew nothing about him. They were in a relationship. I never knew that. All right. But so it doesn't, let why me doesn't now, now that you. we're talking about really your don't. relationship with Mr. Merritt and how you felt, you felt like Chelsea resembled him, Mr. Merritt. You were her boyfriend at the time. Yes, ma'am. When she found out she was pregnant, did she tell you? Probably like five, six months later, then, you know, just popped up at my door and said, oh, uh, I'm pregnant, so you might be the father. You so know. five or six months pregnant, she showed up at the door? Yeah, ma'am. She hadn't called you to tell you she was pregnant all no, that time? No, ma'am. She said she, but he, she, said she erased my number and or whatever, so... Here we go with this know. phone again. No, I did not have his number at the time. But wasn't he your boyfriend? Right, but we had broke up in September 2012. During the month that I had conceived, we stopped talking. That was it for us. We was done. I lost my license in, like, October. -ish. I got my license back in April of 2012. And that's when I came to him and told him. So as soon as you got your transportation As soon as I got my transportation together, back on track, I, I told him there's a possibility. And that's why I'm saying these are grown men acting like there is no possibility to be a father to my child. If you slept with me unprotectedly, guess what? Right. There is a possibility right. of you being my child's father. Right. Okay, so get it right. 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 Not only, not only she sent me the text message, but like a couple months later, she sent my girlfriend, well, her and my girlfriend You're was contacting, they was contacting, my You're girlfriend contact, had reached out to her and she actually was going back and forth, back and forth go with his message and everything. Go ahead and get your lie right, baby, so I can go ahead and correct And the you. thing about it, thing about it, she- Go ahead and get your lie right. Not only, not only Let she sent speak, a message- Let speak, Ms. Mellison, because you know what? It's not time for you to be adding in any other verbiage that's not needed. It's so many men going on and who slept with who. I'm just trying to keep up. I'm so trying, trying to understand why you know, I'm trying to story. slow down so you can't keep up with me. I'm no, just trying no, to no. slow it down a little no, bit. No, 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 no. You need to slow yourself down. That's what you need to do. And you don't need to slow down for me, baby. You need to slow down for you and, and your child. And, that's, and I did. That's what you and need I did. to do. And I did. And that's why I'm sitting here is to help you resolve that mystery. So while I'm trying to figure out why is this man in doubt, and you chirping off on the side so I can't hear him. If this turns out to be your daughter's father, I at least want to understand where is he coming from? So that in the end, I can help figure out how to encourage and inspire and motivate you all to be better for this young child so that she's not standing where you're standing right now one day with her opening statement being, well, I ain't never had a father. It don't have to happen again, but you got to be quiet. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Mr. Merritt. Yes, ma'am. You are actually hoping that this beautiful child is yours. Yes, ma'am. And why is that? Explain that to the court. Because, you know, I feel like the baby looked like me. I really didn't have my father in my life like I wanted him to, like he was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I felt like you know, the child, every child deserves to have a father and a mother in his life. Yes. So I just want to, you know, be there for her regardless, even if she minds or not. And you feel like when you look at her ba this baby, this beautiful baby, that she looks like baby pictures of you. Yeah, man, got the cheeks and everything. <laughs> so, Miss Mellison, when you look at the picture, do you see a resemblance? I do. When um, Tyrone had his hair, him and the baby had the same hair, the same hairline, and they have a big forehead. <laughs> well, you know what? I have to say this. Uh, there are many days I sit in this very seat and I watch men wait for the chance to avoid responsibility. Mm -hmm. But there are those wonderful times, and, you know, this is one of them where I see a young man that's willing to step up and take responsibility and really, really wants to be the father. And that's a great thing. And I want to commend you for that. Thank you. Mr. Williams. Yes, ma'am. You brought a witness today. Yes. I would like to hear from her. Ma'am, please step up and state your name. Cecily Baldwin. And your relationship to the defendant, just to be clear, you're his... Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Yes, Okay. Ms. Baldwin. 
please state to the court what it is you know about this situation. Well, Your Honor, there was a mutual friend between Antoinette and I. And he came to me because he saw Stacy and I together. And he was he felt like he should have brought it to my attention that there may that he may have had a child. And I got her Facebook name and I friend requested her. So you reached out to her. And I have the messages right here. I have Let all me the see Facebook those messages. Drone. And so was she receptive to well, you she, reaching out? To the, her first message was, do I know you? And from that point, I let her know, uh, you and I may know the same person, Stacy Williams. It was brought to my attention that you two may have a baby together, and I don't condone an absent parent. And if that's the case, we can get it figured out. If you need help, I don't mind helping you. This is everything I said to her. But she made a statement that she had a DNA test done and her baby was light-skinned like the daddy. And she so also... she told you that she had a DNA test done yes, already. And I'm looking through your evidence. I see a message here. It says, I got a DNA test because my child is light-skinned like her dad. If you see her pick, but Stacy was running, saying he wasn't her dad, and he didn't want to take responsibility of possibly having another child. I don't know how long you've been with him, but I know he was talking to me while talking to other women, but I don't know. So in the, if this message from Ms. Mellerson is confirming that she did tell you she got a DNA test, but had you really had a DNA test? We was in the process of doing that. But Ty, but Mr. Mary, but Mr. Mary had went away for eight months, and I wasn't able to do that. But my thing is, this that right there that they're talking about, that's not important to me. What's important to me is trying to find out who the father of my child is, so my child can be taken care of. I absolutely agree. Very correct. What it goes to, and this is what I want you to understand. I don't know Ms. Baldwin, but as she stands here in court and presented this, I just didn't see her presented with ill will. I think she presented it because they just believed that you'd had a DNA test and had established who the father of the child was, right. which further fueled his feeling that, well, I'm not the father. Right. That's what she presented this evidence right. for. So what I'm trying to explain to you, to you all today, is you see how much a communication and lack thereof, right, right. can get you in these situations. Uh, look, it ain't no time talking about no baby on no Facebook. Right. Uh, you got to call me. We might have to have some tea. Right. Because we might have to get face to face and figure out what's going on. You see what I'm saying? I mean, so, right. so that we all understand where we at. So that we're not standing here in paternity court years later and we've got a child that needs to know who her father is. You want to say something? Ms. Mellerson, what I do appreciate, and I'm going to say this to you, because even though I tell you when you're wrong, I'm also going to tell you where you're right. You're trying to break a cycle, and that's a great thing. Because this can't keep happening. All right. At some point, a mother has got to stand up and take that stuff for her child. Whatever it is, the shame, <laughs> the embarrassment, the I gotta lay it on the line. You also dealt with paternity issues in your own life. Right. And I know you don't want that for your child. And I'm happy that you're strong enough to do that for your baby. That's the right thing. And I'm ready for the results. <laughs> now, before I read these, I have to ask you, Ms. Mellerson. Mm-hmm. What are your hopes today? To be honest with you, I wish Tyrone was her father because I don't, I don't want to deal with this. Mm -hmm. I don't. And it would not be healthy for my child because it's all, this all it's going to be. Your day Honor, in, day my out. Thing is, my thing is, everybody that knows me, I got two children on my, on my own. And everybody that knows me knows that my kids come first. And so what are you hoping for today? I mean, if, if the tests come back positive that I am the father, then I'm going to step up like I do with my other kids. And if how about you, Mr. Merritt? If she mine, you know, I'm going to be there. But, you know, if not, you know, we could try to work something out and see what, you know, where we're going to go from there. All right, well, let's find out the results. The results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. 
In the case of Mellerson v. Williams merit pertaining to whether Mr. Williams is the biological father of 11-month-old Chelsea Mellerson, it has been determined by this court and Mr. Williams, you... Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. In the case of Mellerson v. Williams merit pertaining to whether Mr. Williams is the biological father of 11-month-old Chelsea Mellerson, it has been determined by this court and Mr. Williams, you are not the father. In the case of Mellerson v. Williams Merritt pertaining to whether Mr. Merritt is the biological father, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Merritt, you are not the father. Well, I know who it is. <laughs> Ms. Mellerson, you could have saved I'm, I'm us 100%. all. I'm 100. I didn't. I'm saying I'm not coming up here trying to, you know, sit here and say, you know, so you're this doing and that a process. You're saying basically what you're saying. I did not process know. Of elimination. You really didn't right. know. And now that these two are ruled I know, out, 100. You know. I, I know. 100. You know what? That's the most important thing. Now, what you do with that truth is going to really be the testimony of who you are. Because now it's time for you to take that truth if you can establish a relationship with your daughter and her father, beautiful. But now you got the ball, right? I have delivered you the truth. Now I want you to figure out how to win, okay? And I know you have the strength to do it for your child, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, she's counting on you and I'll be checking on you. And I'm not gonna let her down. Bam, court is adjourned. That's what I wanted to hear. That's it. You know, I'm kind of disappointed, but you know, that's life. It was powerful, you know. I felt like she gave me a message that I need to take control of and do what I have to do as a mother. She basically just kept it real that, and she basically spoke on what she felt like we both need to hear. And that was actually something that everybody needed to hear.